And uh, yeah, I want to read a few different passages of Scripture. Um, the Matthew 1 passage is they would, uh, they would call him Jesus because he would save his people from their sins. A very well known verse to us but for the name of Jesus and uh, the idea of Savior. The Luke 2 is the, the classic Christmas story. I want to read part of it just down to verse 7 today. Luke 2, verse 1 through 7 in the New King James. It came to pass in those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. She brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swapping cloths, laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. We'll stop there and turn over to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Verse 5 and 6. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and those on earth, and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Philippians 2, verse 5 through 11. He humbled himself. This whole event in the birth of Jesus, of course, shows how pitiful society had become without Christ, without God's Word. Any decent person should have made room for a woman who was about to give birth. This speaks of the sinfulness and the depths of the awful condition of the hearts of men at that time. They were in need of the Savior and did not even have a nice room for Him to be born in. They were blinded for a time until He would reveal Himself as the Savior. Interesting passage in Galatians 4. Galatians chapter 4, verse 1 through 7. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all, but is under guardians and stewards until the, the time appointed by the Father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth His Son, born of a woman, 
born under the law. To redeem those who were under the law. That we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts. Crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. What a wonderful passage, again from Paul, and to the Galatians. And the topic of the book of Galatians is uh, the law and grace, of course. And I think the point here is that in all of fulfillment of the law, at the right and proper time, God's Son was sent. So that we no longer, Jewish people especially, no longer under bondage to the law, but can be free by the Lord Jesus Christ and, and receive the inheritance as a son, as a child of God. And for all of those that believe in the Lord Jesus, we become sons of children of Abraham by faith in Jesus Christ. And those that receive the, in, the inheritance, the promise, the cause of why? Because the Son has come as the Savior. He's the Savior, of course, of those Israelites who would believe the message. He came to the Jew first, but He's the Savior of the whole world. Those that would believe the message of Christ. That's good news for us today. Great news that He was born as the Savior. The Savior. The one who provides salvation. The source of our salvation. Also the word Savior and the name Savior for the Lord Jesus gives us different, little different meanings in the Bible. Deliverer. Protector. Preserver. We can faithfully know Him as Deliverer. You know, when Moses brought the children of Israel across the Red Sea, God delivered and redeemed His people from slavery. That was only a picture for us today. And all of these centuries since, a picture, an example of what the Lord Jesus would do in delivering His people, and bringing them out of the slavery of sin, and into the new life that we have in Jesus Christ. Amen. He not only delivers, but He protects. He's always with His people. Jesus, some of His last words on earth to His people were, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. We have that confident assurance that He is with us always, not only as Savior, not only as Deliverer, but also as Protector. We can be confident He's with us. No matter what valley we walk through, no matter how difficult things may get, we have that firm assurance He's with us. Hallelujah. Somebody say Amen. <laughs> Somebody, please. Yeah. You know, this is a great promise. And uh, in any church that I've worked in, there have been those that have held out to this promise. The promise of the Lord, I'm with you always. Very simple word, but very powerful in our lives. And because we can cling to that by faith in Jesus Christ. Not everybody has that promise. Only those who trust in Him. Born as a Savior. Mary herself rejoiced, and I think it's very significant in Luke's account and uh, uh, prior to the, the incarnation story, the birth of Jesus, in Luke 1, 47, Mary rejoices in God her Savior. And to me, this is a dynamic statement that Mary acknowledged she needed the Savior herself which is a very important point to our Catholic friends. Very important point for them. That Mary needed the Savior too. 
And so that the salvation that Jesus Christ brought to us, brought to us, is for all of those that would put their trust in Him. Whether they were in ancient times past, or whether they were anticipating or looking for the coming of the Savior, or whether they were in the time of Jesus when His feet were on the earth, they were looking to Him as the promised Messiah who would bring salvation to them. Or whether, like us today, we're looking back at the cross and we say we've received the Lord Jesus as our Savior and Lord. We're trusting in Him today. And all that He has done for us, Mary rejoiced in God, her Savior. You too can act like Mary today and rejoice in God, your Savior. He was born as a Savior. He was born of Mary. A direct quote is found in Matthew 1.23 from Isaiah. Just repeating Isaiah's prophecy. I don't know, five, six hundred years before. Matthew applied and gave interpretation to the words of Isaiah. That a virgin shall be with child. In Matthew's application, of course, is that this was a clear sign that the Messiah, the King, was being born. A clear sign. And so that those that understood the Scriptures and had studied the Old Testament prophecies of Isaiah, the great prophet that he was, and the wonderful prophecies of Isaiah would have recognized or should have recognized that these words were applied to the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. And so when Matthew recorded his gospel, he made sure he included it there for us. The virgin would be with child. The young maiden, the girl, who had never known a man. She would be with child. And this child, of course, would be the Messiah. Born of Mary. She was born out back. I guess that's for our Australian friends. Out back. Thank you. Thank you. Out back from the inn, they came to this inn for, for refuge. Here she is. It's time to give birth. And they're needing a place of refuge, a place where travelers could stay. So they go to the inn this place that would receive the travelers in. It's interesting that Jesus receives all that come to Him by faith. That's what Scripture says. He would not turn them away. But the end had no place for Him. So He understood what it was to not be received. But yet, He will receive all that come to Him. Also, the inn would be a place of rest for travelers to come in. The hotel or the motel. We get our reservation, but yet we arrive and they say, no, sorry, we didn't have that reservation. Leslie, that happened to me in Hawaii. We were going through, we had gone to one of the cheap online sites and reserved our room in Hawaii. And so we flew into Hawaii right on time, arrived at the hotel, and they were like, who are you? And so we had a good argument with the people there at the hotel. And we insisted that you must get us a room because we paid and we have reserved this room. And so they did, but it was in another hotel across town. Thankfully, we found a place the inn is a place of rest. Jesus said, Come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. They turned Him away from the place of rest. But the good news in the Gospel is, He will not turn you away if you will come to Him. That in you that needs rest is your soul and spirit. It's troubled, and it will continue to be troubled. Your life will continue to be troubled until you find rest in the Lord Jesus. That's a fact. That's just the way it is. 
And Jesus said in Matthew 11, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It's the rest only the Lord Jesus can give. The homeless man can find this kind of rest even without a place to sleep. The rich actually can find this kind of rest if they will turn their heart and turn completely to the Lord Jesus. The poor can find this kind of rest anywhere on God's earth. Those who will look to the Lord Jesus can find this kind of rest that only Jesus can give. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, not Jerusalem. He's not born in the place necessarily thought to be where the king would be born. But the prophets had announced it 500 years previous to his birth. Bethlehem would be the place. Not only Joseph's ancestry, but also through Mary's ancestry of King David. Interesting. Interesting. 